Hey guys, welcome to Proko. My name is Stan Prokopenko. Today I'm gonna be critiquing a project from the Drawing Basics course. The way this works is I'm gonna scroll through the assignments tab and anybody that submitted here is gonna get a chance of me selecting <laughs> you for a critique. There were a lot of submissions. I think around a thousand. So obviously I'm not gonna get to everybody. That would be a, a ridiculously long video. I gave you guys photo reference of a pair and a portrait and your job was to simplify the shapes, the values, and the edges down to just the bare minimum. It's an exercise in simplifying because simplification is a very important concept for artists. And so the results look something like this. This is my demo that I did also in the course for the pair. This is the demo for the portrait. It looks basically like a polarized version of the drawing. The way the course works is I'll tackle a, a mini fundamental concept and I'll give you a lesson. Then I'll sometimes I'll give you warm ups for that lesson. Then I give you a project, sometimes multiple projects to practice the concepts of that lesson. Then I'll demonstrate those projects for you. And finally, I'll do a critique to people who submitted their assignment in the community over at Proka.com. And that's what this is. This is the very first project of the course. So if you want to join the group, follow along. That's over at Proka.com slash drawing. All right, so let's jump into the first critique. Okay, so the very first submission came from Sandro. All right, so Sandro, you did a pretty good job of simplifying the shapes, although the proportions are a little off. I mean, it still looks like a pair, you know, it's a pair. It's just a pair, <laughs> it's just a pair. But it, it is good to, even in the simplification exercise, try to get your proportions accurate, even if it's just a pair, because these proportion errors will carry over to the more complicated subjects where it matters more. Like if you try the portrait, and you make proportion errors, it's going to look much worse. So for example, you know, you have this very extreme corner and it's very low. So you made this top portion of the pair very tall, very skinny and also symmetrical. That's a big deal as far as shape design is you want to try to look for asymmetries. What is the character of this pair and try to kind of adjust it. You made this very symmetrical. The only thing I think you made different in the contour of it is this side is simple and this side has this bump. Everything else is pretty much just like a mirror image of the other side. And what I'm seeing in this pair is first of all, a slight angle, it's very slight, very subtle. And this is going this way, this is going almost straight up. And then, you know, the angles are kind of tilted and a very big dominance of the bottom half. You know, one is tall, one is wide, but they both feel kind of similar in size. And so, it would help for you to perhaps maybe even exaggerate what's going on in the pair. But really right now, you should just be going for accuracy. So, I would have, you know, brought this up, brought this up. Look for an angle this way, this one's straight up, beep, beep. So, capturing more of the character of the pair in the contours. Now, going inside of the pair and looking at your shadow shape design, I'm also seeing a little bit of just kind of a little bit too much of this sort of thing going on where you're going and then you're going around everything. Like just too many squigglies and not enough of some major shape kind of holding everything together. And what I'm talking about is like, I'm seeing a pretty good rhythm going from here to here. A rhythm is just trying to find a connection between two or more things. Here the rhythm is this piece and this piece, but they're connected. They're, if you kind of had an imaginary line going, continue in each one, they would intersect or they would join. And on yours, they kind of join, but like this joins, but then this little piece is so small, it doesn't even feel like it's a major joining of two big shapes. Because then right after you have this, all these little hooks. Whereas here, it's kind of, it's, it feels more like a big wall. And then here, very simple this way. 
So if I was to really simplify this shape, it would it would look kind of like that. I could have even simplified that this thing. There you go into a four four sided polygon. That is like a much simpler shape, and it kind of it unifies the design here. Yours feels fragmented and random. That, um, but not bad. I mean, you're you're still simplifying, which was the the project here is to simplify, not design. So you followed the instructions. No points taken off. Uh, imaginary points. So that's what I would say for shapes. This was a common issue actually, and I'm kind of surprised, guys, because the photograph here made it so clear that the shadows are all darker than anything outside of the shadows. I tried to provide a photo that was just as clear as possible but still it really shows the power of our mind trying to convince ourselves of things being more important than they are and just changing stuff. A lot of you made this mistake where you put these really light shapes inside the shadows and you made them much lighter than they should have been. That fourth value, uh, this was the one right before the darkest, um, I would have brought much closer to a shadow value. Now, you actually didn't make it lighter than this one, than all of this in here, but it looks almost the same. Like the variance within your values where you, you know, you have little dark pieces and little light pieces within it, that variance is larger than the average between this shape and these shapes um, and it shouldn't be. There should be a much bigger different difference between shadows and half tones. I mean, not always. Some lighting situations will make your shadows very light and very close to your half tones but in this very direct light source scenario, you're going to have a big difference. And the other thing I would say with your values is to try to use a little bit more of the tip of the pencil when you're shading large areas for now, just to get better at controlling texture. I'm mostly seeing it in the backdrop. This texture is a little bit too much. I mean, texture is fine, you know, you, you can totally use texture in areas but as you're starting out drawing, it's much better to get good at controlling the tip, you know, shading with the tip of the pencil and just getting really good at keeping that clean. And if that requires you to get more patience in order to do that, then that's what's going to have to happen. So it's good practice for that. Oh, and you know, the, the stem is a little bit too big. But other than that, I, I think you really did a good job. You kept the spirit of the project where you just simplify the heck out of this thing. One thing that I want to really make clear is that in this course, our objective is never going to be to completely replicate reality. When we're drawing from observation, it's going to be to look at our subject and communicate it to the viewer. And a lot of times, in order to clarify your communication, you have to change some things. We're never going to have an assignment where we're trying to do photorealistic stuff. Instead, what we're going to try to do is identify what are the most important parts of reality in order to communicate effectively. Without showing everything, how can you communicate pretty much everything? And that requires embellishment, exaggeration of important features, and it requires a better understanding of reality than pure replication. Because purely replicating something just requires you to be able to see it very well. But communicating it effectively in a simpler way requires you to understand it. Thanks for watching. If you want to see the full critique plus way more premium content, check out the course at proco.com slash drawing. I'll see you there.